positive for COVID-19 in areas bordering the two counties. Now, Nancy Okware has a third report. It is becoming increasingly clear that porous borders pose a great danger to the country, with the Ministry of Health fast-tracking surveillance and screening in a bid to secure the country. The Tanzanian border continuing to be a cause for concern, with the ministry saying that it had intercepted over 182 positive cases that could have penetrated into the country. What would have happened had we not taken the measure of testing at the border is that these 182 people would now be in our midst. They would be moving around the country, and you can therefore imagine the rate of infections that uh, this would have caused. Health Cabinet Secretary Mutahi Kagwe reiterating the importance of social distancing and how damaging one positive case can be if not tamed in time. No infections here yet, no infections here yet, no infections here yet. Perhaps telling us that these people were keeping social distancing and uh, refraining from uh, contacting others and therefore this is where we have been saved. These ones have been our savior because you can imagine if each of these people was like this. And now we don't know what is going to happen to each of these red cases. The revelation came in a spotlight shone on Mombasa County once again after registering a huge number of deaths at home, a major concern to authorities. So I think we should make it clear that the, the, the rise in deaths here in Mombasa is essentially people dying at home. And uh, we want to urge that nobody if a person is unwell, please, please take them to hospital. Out of 1,933 samples tested, 51 people tested positive for COVID-19, bringing the total to 963. Mombasa has so far recorded 27 fatalities. The coastal county has 331 cases spread out in Mvita, which has 186 cases, Likoni 44, Kisauni 37, Nyali 28, Changamo 21, and Jomvu 13. Positive cases in Nairobi County now stand at 470, with Kamukunji having 104 cases, Dagoreti North 56, Mbakasi East 38, Langata 34, while Westlands has 22 cases. With the number of confirmed coronavirus cases in the country almost hitting the 1,000 mark, Health Cabinet Secretary Mutahi Kagwe is cautioning Kenyans against staying at home when they feel unwell, given that there is a new trend where Kenyans are succumbing to COVID-19 at home, hence posing a greater danger to those around them. Nancy Okware, Channel One News. Now, Kenya has moved to thaw brewing diplomatic tensions with its neighbor Tanzania over ongoing efforts to contain the spread of COVID-19. Kenya's ambassador to Tanzania, Dan Kazungu, calling for sobriety in the wake of differences over measures taken by the two nations in containing the spread of the deadly virus. East African Community and Regional Development Cabinet Secretary Aidan Mohamed says a trade relations between Kenya and Tanzania remain healthy even as Rift Valley Regional Coordinator George Natembe conducted a fact-finding mission along the Kenya-Tanzania common border. It is a diplomatic tiff that has threatened the cordial relations between the two East African neighbors, a row over divergent measures taken by Kenya and Tanzania, which had seen the latter threaten to institute all three measures. Kenya's ambassador to Tanzania, Dan Kazungu, will call for calm amid bring mistrust between people from the two countries. Tukijua adui wetu sisi, sim Tanzania, sim Rundi, sim Rwanda, sim Uganda, sim Somali, sim Ethiopia. Adui wetu sisi ni kirusi, ni ilifuta hili, mba unakuja kutuaribia. Kazungu saying the measures were not in any way targeted at Tanzanians, adding that similar measures have been introduced along Kenyan borders with other East African neighbors. And as Kazungu was speaking inside Tanzania's territory, East African Community and Regional Development Cabinet Secretary Adin Mohamed will denounce in Nairobi that trade relations between the two neighbors remain healthy. And we are aware that there are a few trucks 
of Kenyan registration that have been denied access and entry into Tanzania, but we have not stopped processing vehicles coming from Tanzania into Kenya, as I've said earlier on. So those are isolated cases, and we are talking about you know, five to seven vehicles that have been uh, you know, slowed down. They are actually on the Tanzanian side, but uh, they haven't been allowed to, to proceed. So we are dealing with some of these isolated cases. The assurance coming after six trucks fearing goods were denied access to Tanzania through the Isibania border on Tuesday afternoon, despite the drivers having tested negative for coronavirus. <laughs> Nikapeo Barua, na ofisa wa hospitali wa port. Nikataka kuchukua gari yangu nivuke niende Tanzania, nikakatazwa. The two states should sit together in the spirit of EAC so that they can harmonize the fight against COVID-19. Because currently as things stand, it means that there is a stalemate in the international trade. This is a section of leaders from Kenya accused Tanzanian authorities of harassing their constituents. Na bwana SCC au wazee wa nyumba 10 ningeomba sababu wana patrol mpakani. Tafutia uniform ili waonekane. Tusije wakaonekana kama ni wakora. Hiyo ni shida nyingine. Sanjua wa Tanzania wamepewa uniform. Wakaenda pale kujaribu kusaidiana na askari wanaonekana kama wakora. Rift Valley Regional Coordinator George Natembea in the company of other government officials conducting a fact-finding mission that will take them to Angata Barakui along the Kenya-Tanzania common border. <laughs> Natembea urging leaders from the two nations to avoid utterances that constrained bilateral relations, saying relations between the two nations remain cordial, saying the measures announced by the Kenyan government were meant to cushion nationals of the two neighboring countries from the adverse effects of the coronavirus. How a public health issue can become a trade issue is what puzzles me, because we are dealing with a public health issue, and by concern Kenya and Tanzania. I see a member trade between Kenya and Tanzania, Hapana. So, Lazima what we went to Fanya Biashara, Lazima to Leko Tafuta Mali, Lazima went to improve our living standards in both countries, and Lazima as government officials on the ground, Jukumuletu Zokula Mori, Jukumuletu to address problems and Bosco Pale Kakisha Kwamba Biashara Katia Kenya and Tanzania, in Endelea, Bela Kwadriwa and Ogoja Corona. For Channel One News, I'm Serafina Robi. Now, still on COVID-19, a man said to have succumbed to COVID-19 was hurriedly buried on Tuesday at his home in Ryan Village, Gidungori constituency. Now, the late Stanley Ndishu is said to have died on Saturday last week, shortly after he was rushed to Ngewa Health Center when he developed breathing complications. His family is, however, insisting that they came did not die of COVID-19, attributing his death to complications resulting from asthma. Rayani village in Komaiko, Gidunguri, the burial of the late Stanley Ndishu, <laughs> who is said to have succumbed to COVID-19 on Saturday last week. <laughs> the brief, unique burial performed by health professionals in adherence to guidelines issued by the Ministry of Health on handling remains of COVID-19 patients, not giving the family a chance to pay their last respects as they would have wished. <laughs> Ministry officials who could not comment on camera affirming that tests were conducted on the late issue, confirming that he indeed died having tested positive for COVID-19, claims being refuted by the family of the deceased who insist that their kin was known to be asthmatic since he was young. <laughs> wakuja na barua watuonyeshe juu watu watutenganisha watatutenganisa kwa kijiji juu hana corona alikuwa na asima according to the deceased sister Nancy Wangui Ndishu developed difficulties in breathing and was rushed to Ngewa health center where he was pronounced dead e, alienda hospitali pale Ngewa health center akatibiwa akakataa ak, ak, kupumua akaaga 
The incident has left area residents in shock after realizing that somebody from their locality had tested positive and died of COVID-19. For Channel One News, I'm Safin Aching Oma. And now moving on, a good number of national and county administration agencies are pulling all stops to help mitigate the spread of COVID-19. While screening and surveillance has been enhanced across the country, Mombasa County Commissioner Gilbert Kitio has rallied residents to take advantage of the available COVID-19 testing facilities to know the status and help flatten the curve. Now, authorities maintain that it will be easy to fight the pandemic if people adhere to directives issued by the Ministry of Health. Beatrice Gatonye has more. Mombasa County Commissioner Gilbert Kitio, who together with Mombasa County Governor Hassan Ali Joho received donation from well-wishers to aid locals from the impact of coronavirus pandemic, noted that testing for truck drivers is on course and none will be allowed on the road without undergoing screening. He said it is important for Kenyans to know their status as the war against the pandemic intensifies. In terms of uh, the economy, it's so huge. It might even be felt some years down the line. Because so many people are out of their jobs. It's collectively, as a people, as a country, join hands and together we fight this pandemic and within no time we shall succeed. <laughs> In the meantime, Kirinyaga Governor Ann Waigoro has disclosed that more families in her county are facing starvation and require urgent food relief. Waigoro, who was distributing rice to over 500 vulnerable families, said that COVID-19 pandemic has seriously affected the families as many breadwinners were casual laborers and have been rendered jobless. The other side, we have now the effects of Corona, uh, COVID-19, and uh, we have we have a lot of need, and that is why we are taking the time to go out, encourage people, keep their spirits up. If you notice, we are singing to keep their spirits up and also to give them food. Meanwhile, the Wajia County government is calling on well-wishers and other development partners to contribute towards the COVID-19 kitty as the administration intensifies efforts aimed at cushioning vulnerable communities. Wajia Governor Ambassador Mohamed Abdi says the effects of the pandemic have hit area residents hard, especially during this time when there is the restriction of movement across many areas. We therefore call on other partners, notably World Food Program, to step in and cushion the vulnerable communities during this unprecedented difficult time. <laughs> Still in the northern part of Kenya, a general member of parliament, Sophia Abdinur, delivered donation of foodstuff and other essential items alongside cash tokens to support needy families in her constituency as the effects of the pandemic bite. The MP was on a Meet the People tour during which areas along the Kenya-Somalia border which have suffered food shortages, insecurity, and water scarcity, among other myriad of challenges. We have started distribution of uh, food, and uh, we, we started this morning in Masalani town. We were able to reach more than uh, 900 households in Masalani. Uh, we were able to reach about 140 madrasa and duksi teachers in Masalani. Beatrice Getonyang Etich, Channel One News. The coronavirus pandemic has left every nation on edge as it continues to devastate the globe. Now, for refugee 
the, for the refugee population in the country, there has been a nervous watch as the pandemic slowly spreads across the country with two cases already reported at two refugee camps in Garissa. But how do you protect refugees and other people displaced by conflict or persecution from contracting the deadly virus? In this regard, we wish to appeal to the population and the refugees to again to stay at home, to avoid uh, interacting, to avoid crowds, and also maintain hygiene. We want to thank our partners who have extended uh, hand washing facilities into these uh, refugee camps, because this will go a long way in uh, controlling or just ensuring that we do not have cases of COVID-19 in the refugee camps. And now we take a short break. We shall be right back just in a few moments. Aliena Kinga Hafifu Mwilini yuko katika hatari ya kuambukizwa COVID-19. Kuelewa cha kifunza mambo ya photosynthesis na pollination. Hiyo hiyo ni sherehe ya manini? Hakuna hakuna. Kule menunua shopping kajanao jana hapa. Sasa hiyo sana unua vitu singine. Kuna hasara hapo. Hata uwezi uweza kuizi na matajiri hata kidogo. Pata habari kuhusu COVID-19 kupitia vyanzo vinavyoaminika. Piga 719 au bonyeza star 719 hash Hey 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 what's up everybody Mambo Wipi this is Gladson Peter aka One Man Band India catch me live from India on the Good Morning Kenya show aka GMK this Thursday morning from 9 a.m. Welcome back. Now let's continue with our coverage whereby United States President Donald Trump has threatened to permanently halt U.S. funding to the World Health Organization before eventually quitting the organization. His threat came just hours after he accused WHO of playing to the whims of China in a letter to the agency's director general that was shared on Twitter. The coronavirus death toll in the U.S. surpassed 91,000 on Tuesday, with the total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases rising above 1.5 million across the country, according to John Hopkins, University Tyler. President Donald Trump has threatened to permanently halt funding for the World Health Organization and withdraw the United States from the United Nations Health Agency if it does not make substantive improvements in the next 30 days. Early on Monday, Trump attacked the World Health Organization, calling it a puppet of China. And the United States uh, pays them $450 million a year. China pays them $38 million a year. And they're a puppet of China. They're uh, China-centric, to put it nicer, but they're a puppet of China. The development coming as the European Union backed the World Health Organization and multilateral efforts to fight the coronavirus after Trump threatened to quit the global agency. China has dismissed Trump's letter threatening to permanently freeze funding to WHO, saying the U.S. was trying to shift the blame for Washington's own mishandling of the COVID-19 crisis. And the coronavirus is spreading so fast among indigenous people in the most remote parts of Brazil's Amazon rainforest, the doctors are having to evacuate the most seriously ill patients by plane. Brazil's indigenous health service, Sisai, reported on Monday that at least 23 indigenous people had died from COVID-19. 
Elsewhere, Qatar has announced a series of new measures aimed at stopping the spread of the new coronavirus, including halting most commercial activities until May 30th. In Africa, foreigners visiting Tanzania will no longer be subjected to mandatory 14-day quarantine. That is according to the country's health ministry. The new guidelines released by officials on Monday now requires travelers to simply be screened for symptoms at the point of entry. Elsa South Sudan's Vice President Rick Machar has tested positive for coronavirus. His wife, Defense Minister Angelina Tenney, some bodyguards and other staff have also tested positive. And Uganda's President Yoweri Museveni says his government will distribute free masks to all citizens aged above six years before lifting coronavirus containment measures. The wearing of masks in public was made mandatory in early May. Globally, there have been more than 4.9 million confirmed cases of COVID-19, with over 320,000 people having succumbed to the illness, according to the Johns Hopkins University. And nearly 1.9 million people have recovered. Now on a separate matter, the fate of Senate Deputy Speaker Professor Kendiki Kethure will be decided on Thursday when Senate will debate a motion seeking to oust him from his position. A notice of motion calling for his removal was formally tabled before the House on Tuesday by newly installed Majority Chief Whip Irongo Kangate after he was cited among those who snubbed a Jubilee Parliamentary Group meeting called by President Uhuru Kenyatta. Intrigues within the ruling Jubilee Party continued at the Senate on Tuesday, with Majority Whip Irongo Kangata moving a notice of motion, seeking Deputy Speaker and Tarakanidhi Senator Kidure Kidiki's altar. Madam Speaker, I beg to move that this House, Senate, resolve that Senator Professor Kidure Kindiki be removed from the office of the Deputy Speaker of the Senate. The House said to consider the motion on Thursday amid claims that it is part of a wider plan to have members speak in one voice. The move coming just a week after El Geo Marakwet Senator Kipchumbe Murkomen and Nakuru Senator Susan Kihika were replaced as Senate Majority Leader and Senate Whip respectively. Senator Kindiki led last Tuesday's sitting where senators discussed at length the ouster of the two leaders. The newly installed Majority Whip will require at least 44 senators to vote in support of Kindiki's removal. The process of removal of a speaker or his deputy is outlined in Article 104, Subsection 2 of the Constitution, which provides that the office of the deputy speaker shall become vacant when the new House of Parliament meets after an election. If the relevant House resolves to ask them by resolution supported by the votes of at least two thirds of its members, or if the office holder resigns from office in a letter addressed to the relevant House, Rumors remain reef that a party targeting those who have failed to toe the party line in endorsing critical decision will then move to the National Assembly with majority leader, majority whip and heads of committees targeted in the political game plan. For Channel One News, I'm glad this Mungai. Now, the rift between warring factions of the ruling Jubilee Party are widening as rival groups trade accusations and counter accusations. This comes as one faction protested also of their colleagues in Senate leadership and the motive censure of some MPs at the National Assembly, claiming that the move is aimed at intimidating those holding divergent opinions. Now, their rivals in the party are, however, daring them to resign and seek fresh mandate from the electorate if they don't agree with the direction the party has taken. Safin Aching Oma with more details. The ouster of Senators Kipchumba Murkomen and Susan Kihika from their positions of Majority Leader and Chief Whip respectively has touched off another round of political warfare. A section of Jubilee MPs including Kikuyu MP Kimani Ishungwa, Matira Lomika Rigathi Gashagwa and their Dagoreti South counterpart John Kiarie now terming it an attempt to chastise persons holding contrary opinion in the ruling outfit. The group that has openly declared its allegiance to the Deputy President William Ruto is however adamant that the current onslaught will not yield much as it will not bend their resolve on the future of the country. I am not distracted from my work. I will continue to work both as chairman of the Budget and Appropriations Committee and also as member of parliament for Kikuyu because I was elected by the people of Kikuyu to serve them and I will continue to serve them in whatever capacity I can. 
today senator uh, keheka nakuru uh, is a very popular leader because of the way she was treated unfairly and they know the role she played in putting this government into power then you come and howled out of office for no good reason the people are with her 100% but amid this defiance, Kirinyaga Governor Ann Mumbi Waiguru is telling off the group that has refused to tow the party line. While castigating their conduct, the outspoken county chief urges them to leave the party and seek a fresh mandate from the electorate for openly betraying the ideals of the President Uhuru Kenyatta led outfit. Jubilee Party is, is finally um, cracking the whip to ensure that there's party discipline. And um, it is very dangerous when you have a party that doesn't have discipline. According to Waiguru, loyalty to the party leader is not an option. The party is not intimidating anybody. Uh, all we have said is that we need to adhere to our party constitution and our code of conduct. Everybody signed a code of conduct before they got their nomination certificate. For Channel One News, I'm Safin Aching Oma. And away from third, parts of the country have continued to experience enhanced rainfall with a number of those affected by the floods on the rise. Now, 12 families from Mitahato Gidungori sub-county are the latest victims of the floods after the farms were swept away by underground water. Though some parts of the country have started to report dry spells, the effects of the rains that have been pounding various parts of the country continue to be felt. Twelve families in Mitahato Gidungori sub-county now grappling with the effects of the rainwaters that have affected thousands in the country. <laughs> After reporting the matter and getting no assistance from authorities, they collectively tried to dig up trenches and drain the waters from their lands. Pauline Wanja, a resident, say they have never witnessed such levels of water that have also killed their livestock. government. Hawa hakuna pahali wanayasahamia. Juhu hapa ni pahali watasi wamewalelea na wamekukua wakiwa hapa na familia sao. Kwa hivyo tunaomba uh, hawa wa, wa fiongosi at least wajitole. Wakuje, wasikana na hizi familia, wa wasaidie. Residents say they fear contracting water bond diseases noting that a cemetery nearby is also covered by flood waters. Eme, e, where we and residents from Nyataragi village in Kembu are living in fear of losing their homes after a landowner sold his land to a mining investor whose activities on the land has seen the road cut off while their homes are at risk of collapse. Residents say despite submitting their reservations to relevant authorities on the risk the activities of the investor pose to their homes, he has continued unabated. <laughs> Muranga tunajua ni kuporomoka. Lakini hapa sio kuporomoka. Hii ni watu wakafanya kazi. Ule mwenye mwenye contract na wene mchamba. Dio wameku we? Eh mama bibi mshababisha hii. Na wanajua wanaona. They're now calling on the national government to intervene and compel the landowner and investor to stop mining activities on the land and rehabilitate the road that has now been destroyed. Caroline Kaman reporting for Channel 1 News. And now on education matters, parents and guardians have been challenged to play more proactive roles in the lives of their children during the coronavirus pandemic. National Anti-Female Mutilation Board Chair Agnes Pareo says the continued stay of learners at home have predisposed them to societal ills that could have a negative effect on their lives. On May 4th, 2020, schools across the country were expected to resume learning for the second term. However, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the government extended the reopening date for one month as part of efforts to scale up national efforts to fight the spread of the virus. And as the government strives to mitigate the effects of COVID-19, 
Parents and guardians have been urged to be more involved in the lives of their children so as to prevent any form of exploitation. This is going to be like an opportunity for those who wanted to marry off their daughters to do so. And I want to ask them not to do that. Please help your daughters. Please take care of your daughter so that she doesn't fall under this trap of the curfew and the shutdown of schools. Because this is going to be a hard moment for them because these, these girls need mother care. The mothers should be close to their daughters because all these hours the girls are idle and they are at home. National Anti-Female Mutilation Board Chair Agnes Pareo says the continued stay of young children at home has exposed them to societal ills that could have far-reaching implications on their lives. Pareo pointing out that early marriages and teen pregnancies are some of the challenges facing learners from predominantly pastoralist communities. The grassroots organizations have noticed increased incidences of gender-based violence against women and girls. Incidences of child marriage have increased since the curfew and the schools shut down. This is because the girls are at home with their parents for long hours and this gives an opportunity for them to marry off their daughters and those who want to cut them can do it silently at night. This even as she reiterated on the need to adhere to the government's directive so as to aid in curbing the spread of COVID-19. Now moving on, residents of Sumbaru County are calling on the government to come to their rescue in the wake of the dwindling drugs and food supplies in the county. The COVID-19 domino effect has now taken a toll in the county, especially for persons living with HIV as well as tuberculosis patients who are having a hard time accessing food and drugs. Details of these and other stories in our county news roundup. The truck loaded with foodstuff came as relief for the residents of Samburu County. However, the relief is short-lived as not everyone will benefit. Among the people queuing for the supplies is Angela, who is among those living with HIV, who says it has been challenging to access medication as well as food. Chakula iko kwa nyumba na watu wengi wanaumia sana. Kuna watu kama sasa sisi tuko katikati hatujafika ile umri ya kuchukua ya kuchukua, ya kuchukua pesa ya mapencha na baada ya wiki mbili kama hivi ndio itaendelea tutakuja kuambiwa kuna watu wamekufa kwa sababu ya njaa. Sentiment. Meanwhile, Mombasa politician Salim Mohamed, popularly known as Tenge, has presented himself to authorities. This comes after he was reported missing by his family, which expressed fears over his life after their home was allegedly raided by persons claiming to be police officers. Tenge was not in the house at the time of the raid. <laughs> Kuhusu Muhammad yuko wapi? Tukamwambia Muhammad hatujui pale yuko, yuko kwa msikiti gani? Tukamwambia hatuwezi jua, yuko kwa msikiti gani? Wakaniambia and hundreds of squatters claiming to be victims of Rai and Madhare 4A evictions in Nairobi have invaded the 1200 acres of Kenya Broadcasting Corporation land in Matungulu, Machakos County. The group is part of squatters whose houses were recently brought down in Rwai by the government as it sought to reclaim the land to pave way for expansion by the Dandora sewerage plant. It was on Thursday. Tulikuja hapa na PS Muragori. PS of land. Tulikuwa na DCC wa Rwai. Anaitua, I think, uh, 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 Chacha, something Chacha. Daniel or Peter Chacha. Ile kitu ilifanya watulete hapa. Walikuwa nataka kujua kama roho zetu zitaridhika na hii shamba. In Tana River County, a 20-year-old man is nursing gunshot wounds at the Garissa Referral Hospital after he was allegedly shot by Kenya police reservists in Langoni area. The attack is linked to the ongoing border dispute between residents of Tana River and Kitui counties that has persisted for over a decade. Kulingana na katiba yetu impia ama hata ya zamani kila moja ana haki ya kuishi pahali popote ndani ya nchi hii hii mambo ya kuambiwa we ni somali we kwenu si hapa 
imetuumiza sana siku nyingi kama sisi watu ya North East and in Busia, residents of Nasawa in Matayo's constituency want the government to involve them in a structured dialogue and agree on how the controversial 843-acre Nasawa land will be utilized. The locals allege that a private investor had leased the land for 50 years, which they said had no benefit to the community. Tulikuwa tuletoe factory. Hii factory ingasaidia watoto wetu hata kwa kusoma. Kwa sababu tungelikuwa tunapika kideri usiku, tunakuja tunausa hapa usubi na uji, tunalipia watoto yetu school fees. Waliweka hapa mnyazi kakuja ikachukua ikapanda miwa. Miwa hii wa mama wetu wake wetu wakipita hapa ndani wanarepiwa. Watoto wetu wakienda shule primary second wanarepiwa. Institute of Curriculum Development, nurturing every learner's potential. Coronavirus COVID-19 is a respiratory virus spreading across the world. The infection is spread from droplets of coughing and sneezing of an infected person, touching or shaking hands or being in contact with contaminated surfaces or objects with the virus. The signs and symptoms are fever, coughing, headache, body ache, difficulty in breathing. The disease can be prevented by regularly washing hands with soap and running water, avoid close contact with people who have flu-like symptoms, avoid handshake, hugs and kissing. Also, protect yourself by covering your mouth or nose using a disposable tissue while coughing or sneezing. If you experience these symptoms and you had traveled or been in contact with a person from a country reporting COVID-19, you should isolate yourself for 14 days. Dial star 719 hash or call 719. This message has been brought to you by the government of Kenya and its partners. On the next episode of Kona. Do you support him? Absolutely. I was just asking your wife how she copes with you being away. Some sportsmen's wives have been known to stray. What kind of gentlemen come to watch young boys beat each other to a pub for the fun of it? You're beginning to annoy me. Get out of the way. Abasi, I'm being hooked and I'm talking to you. You know, you come on a lot of work. Me, me, see, Baba. And any sympathy I had went out the window the second you attacked that girl. Please do. Welcome back. Let's talk business. 
revenue collection is likely to drop by close to half a trillion shillings due to the economic slowdown caused by the coronavirus pandemic. Treasury Cabinet Secretary Okuri Otani says the development expenditure will be the hardest hit by the revenue drop in the fiscal year 2019-2020. As of March this year, KRA was facing a collection shortfall of 212 billion shillings, which is expected to widen by the end of the current financial year. A slowdown in business activity as a result of the COVID-19 induced trade and travel restrictions is expected to add more pressure on the Kenya Revenue Authority at a time when the country is facing mounting expenditure squeeze. The shortfall has been caused by reduced tax collection from workers and businesses. As of March this year, tax and appropriation in aid revenue stood at 1.33 trillion shillings, falling short of a 2019-2020 financial year nine-month target by 211 billion shillings. In the next three years, our trajectory was showing that you know we'll have near zero budget uh, deficit. That was our desired point. And we are determined to go along that route because in the interest of this country that we reduce, that we manage our own expenditure based on our own solutions, based on our revenue. But then unfortunately, as we embarked on this, now we've been hit by this shock. Never planned for, never anticipated in any way. And therefore, all the parameters and the assumptions that we put in place are now going to change. And it's on this basis that we expect low revenue from the areas that I've already cited earlier. Treasury CS Ukuri Yatani says the drop is likely to be worse in the coming days. The below target tax collections are also expected to drop further in the coming days after the government lowered various taxes to cushion Kenyans against negative impact of the coronavirus. President Uhuru Kenyatta assented to the tax law amendments bill 2020. The law exempts those earning less than 28,000 shillings from paying income tax, while those earning above these will benefit from pay-as-you-earn tax reduction of between 30 and 25 percent. The activities within our own economy have seriously slowed down. Some actually grounded the whole developer tourism, the hotel industry, the general service industry, air transport, general transport has actually gone down. Then that means we are going to have less revenue, actually quite drastic uh, drop in the revenue. Speaking when he released a survey on the socio-economic impact of COVID-19 on Kenyan households, the Treasury CS has said Kenya is mulling over renegotiating its loan terms with lenders. We are not very certain yet whether we are going to go for it because the accompanying conditions are a bit tough because we will not be expected to borrow during this period. And at the same time, we are holders of some of the loans, which will not actually ideally be the amount that they are going to give concession for. So we are studying, we are not saying no, but we are studying and making sure that we tailor our own uh, convenience. According to the survey, 21.5% of households in Kenya were unable to pay house rent in the month of April due to job losses. The report further says there has been a 51.7% increase in the cost of transport in the same period. O'Brien came in for Channel 1 Business. ad hoc committee on COVID-19 situation is proposing that only tax compliant micro and small enterprises get access to liquidity support mulled by the government as coronavirus pandemic economic fallout deepens. Speaking when he tabled the fourth and fifth progress report on COVID-19 situation in Kenya, the committee's chairman, Johnson Sakaji, father called on Industrialization, Trade and Enterprise Development Ministry to publish regulations establishing the micro and small enterprises development fund to allow its operationalization. According to the Senate Ad Hoc Committee on COVID-19 Situation, MSMEs in trade, agriculture, tourism, retail remain the worst hit during the COVID-19 pandemic. In its 51st sitting with various stakeholders across the country, the committee recommends for the immediate operationalization of the MSED fund. To support MSMEs to continue with their businesses during the pandemic, 
the government to hasten the planned liquidity support for small and medium-sized enterprises through credit to banks and other financial institutions to further promote MSME's emphasis to be made to government agencies to procure available items from local funds as much as possible. And with the expected release of liquidity support to small businesses, not all businesses stand to benefit. We don't have to you know, get uh, you know, direct money to pay their rent. Mr. Speaker, if we protect these businesses, especially in the hospitality sector and tourism sector, through such a wage subsidy fund, we will have affected very many Kenyans. And these businesses are able to demonstrate, one, they pay as you want, they've been paying for their employees. They're able to demonstrate these have been our cash flows, these have been our turnovers. But during this period, they get at a very discounted rate this money from the banks, which they already have a relationship with, Mr. Speaker, will have done a great service. To our country, Mr. Speaker. In April, in a State of the Nation address, President Uhuru Kenyatta promised an SME credit guarantee scheme to exempt them from complex application procedures and collateral requirements against impact of economic and financial disruptions caused by COVID-19 pandemic. Treasury reported to us that they were in a very high level um, or a very you know advanced stage with the you know our development partners um, to get money a grant and even some uh, as concessionary loans around, at that point it was 120 billion, to cushion small businesses. Mr. Speaker, if this money is actually channeled through you know, our lending institutions at concessional very low rates. At the same time, the committee recommended enhanced accountability and oversight over the COVID-19 emergency fund and other funds established in the national and county levels. The national treasury and the county treasuries to submit monthly income and expenditure reports to Parliament and the respective county assemblies. Community level monitoring and evaluation frameworks should be also put in place to ensure proper, proper oversight of emergency COVID-19 funds. The Senate all called on county assemblies to resume in order to provide their oversight role in monitoring emergency expenses. Observation that many accounting officers are taking advantage of the pandemic to do emergency procurement and to misuse uh, funds related to sorting out the issue of COVID, Mr. Speaker. They must continue following the public procurement uh, laws that we have, Mr. Speaker. Kenya's GDP growth for 2020 is expected to decline to 3%, and if extreme shocks persist, growth is expected to go down further to 2.5% as global demand remains weak. The committee is further calling on local sourcing of PPE and masks to support local industries. Alan Aoko, Channel One Business. Now, residents of Ngeta, Keto, in Lodwa, Turkana County, have held peaceful demonstrations accusing Kenya Power of its reluctance to restore electricity in the area, which has been out for a month. The residents claim that delays in replacing the faulty transformer has adversely affected proper running of businesses and households in the area and want the situation remedied. Lodwa is considered the economic hub for Trukana County, housing local and governmental facilities including Trukana's biggest health facility and the main referral hospital, Lodwa County Hospital. However, for the last one month, over 2,500 households and businesses within Nitakito area have been in the dark. So, I would like to say that the government has been able to do it for a long time because there are many people and many people who have been waliwekewa wali apply steam na sisi wengine wakapata wengine wakaambiwa mitasao asiko na ukikuja kwa ofisi unaambiwa ongea msuri ndio upate mita paka leo kuna mtu ana power na serikali ilitoa offer ya kuwekea kila mtu stima kwani ofisi iko na shida gani the irate residents staged peaceful demonstrations at the Kenya Power Lord station calling for the speedy replacement of the faulty transformer tumekaa kwa giza muda mrefu sana unapata kwamba wakazi wa Ngita Kito hawawezi kwenda dispensary dispensary iko pale kijijini lakini unapata hawezi ku hawezi uh, kutibiwa wanakuwa referred to the LRCH hospital kwa sababu gani hakuna stima pale ya kuweza kuweka uh, wagonjwa pale na madawa pia yanaharibika we cannot be you know kept in darkness as clients who have been uh, getting served for one month and we are referred to Eldoret and we know this is a sub-region office with almost 
all the required items. We do not understand why the manager is referring us to Eldoret. Speaking to Channel 1 on phone, Kenya Power Station head engineer Carl dismissed the claims and assured residents the situation had been remedied. I'm, uh, I'm aware of the issue. Yeah, there was a, a faulty transformer and we apologize for them being, uh, staying long without power and the transformer was replaced okay. yesterday before midday. The angry residents have vowed to keep up with the demonstrations until power is reinstated. Aka, power yetu irudisho leo. Within 24 hours, iyo moto irudi. Sisi nae tuishi kama wa Kenya wengine wenye wanaishi dauni, wenye wanaishi kwa vijuji wenye kwa na stima. Regina Manyara Gitao reporting for Channel One Business. The value of Kenya's top listed farms has shrunk to 1.6 trillion shillings this year to March compared to 2.1 trillion shillings registered last year, according to Africa's top 250 companies report in the latest ranking by South Africa's Africa Business Magazine. Now, Safaricom is the most valuable company among East African listed companies, climbing to 10th position from 14th last year with a market capitalization of 1 trillion shillings. Equity Group Holdings, EABL and KCB Group ranked 82nd, 98th and 92nd respectively. Cooperative Bank is ranked position 110. Kenya lost three companies in the ranking dominated by South Africa and Egyptian firms to register 11 companies.